When I told my wife I found a beach on the east coast we could drive on and camp on, she was pretty excited. Our kids are always up for the beach, so naturally they were also pretty excited. It was a lot to plan for for me, but we had a fun time and learned quite a bit. We can't wait to go back. But in the meantime, here's our quick little guide to make it easier for you to get there. Step one is to pick your ferry service. There are many to choose from, but we went with Davis Ferry Service and we really enjoyed them. They had the nicest bathroom I'd ever seen, and their store was stocked with about anything you could possibly need. They had an epic porch you could lounge around on while you waited on your ride. The ride over took roughly 45 minutes and was very peaceful and scenic. You'll need to reserve your time and be there early, and people often have a change of plans and sometimes they can work you into an earlier or later spot. They also have side-by-side -side rentals. You'll want to go to the Cape Lookout National Park website and get your beach driving permit. This allows your vehicle to drive on the beach, which is kind of the point. We printed this out at home after purchase and kept it in the truck. Once we got off the ferry, we met with park rangers at the entrance and showed them the paperwork and they put the sticker on the windshield. They have another shop there that's very basic. I think maybe they had some ice and maybe cases of water. Once you have your ferry ride booked and your permit paperwork printed, all you need to do is plan your drive. This is obviously location dependent, but for us coming from Kentucky with younger kids, we opted to drive for several hours and hit a public camp spot for the night, and then finish the, the drive the next day. This is all specific to you and your plans, but this made it a bit easier for us. You'll need sunscreen and flying bugs can be an issue. Also consider how you'll power things like fridge or electronics. Solar should be a solid choice. Also, aside from clothes and food, you'll want to think about things like a good tire pressure gauge, recovery gear, and a way to air tires back up. To drive on sand, you'll want to air your tire pressure down. They recommend 15 to 25 PSI. We used the screw-on tire deflators. I had these preset before our trip, and uh, on the ferry, we just screwed them on and that aired us down. I actually aired down everybody's tires on the whole uh, ferry. There are several campgrounds near Davis Ferry, and I'll put a list and links in the description below. Now that you're on your way, you are want to keep an eye on weather conditions. Storms roll in and out pretty quickly, and riptides are a frequent thing. So Cape Lookout is pretty straightforward as far as driving goes. You've got coastline that you can drive on, but they also have these kind of back roads that you'll see. Um, you can drive on these and they're kind of like one lane roads. Um, I'm not really sure what the original intent of them were, but you can get from spot to spot using them. But we honestly found it easier just to drive on the beach closer to the water. The back roads were really narrow and roughly one lane wide. The sand was deep and loose. Uh, when driving on the beach, watch out for other folks who could be fishing. You won't want to drive through their lines. Some areas might even be taped off to help protect sea turtle egg nest locations. There's a lot going on in this place, but it's also big enough for everyone to have their own space here. Let's talk about things that you can't do. No fireworks. No drone flying or metal detectors. Do not camp on top of dunes or anywhere you see vegetation. Don't drive recklessly and just be respectful. If you are fishing, plan on them stopping by and checking your license. Alright, let's talk about the fun stuff. Let's talk about what you can do here. Fish. Make sure your license is current and get those lines wet. Don't underestimate the chance of sharks though. Tours. There is a lighthouse on the island towards the southern end and they do give guided tours of it. However, it's under renovations right now and this option has been cancelled until those are complete. Cabin rentals are also an option here and might be ideal for a family planning on hanging out for a bit. We did not expect inspect them close up, but they didn't seem super nice, but it would be a great get out of the wind option. There are wild horses uh, on the island, but we didn't see any while we were there last summer. Honestly, I don't know where they are located. The rumor is they are on the north end of the island. Uh, swimming and boating and kayaking, again, check the weather as riptides are frequent here and the water can be pretty rough on a normal day. Some general tips and advice here. Uh, the wind can be fierce. Our first night I thought something was wrong and maybe a freak storm was going to hit us. It sounded like a train coming down the beach. With the wind comes sand and it's going to be everywhere. You'll have to keep this in mind when cooking. Even with my truck using a Chevy Tahoe as a windbreak and under the awning, our griddle was covered with sand constantly. 
closer to the line house there is more of a tree line that will help with the wind and sand but it also leads to my next issue which is bugs i never got uh, the first bug bite, but my wife and middle daughter did get mugged by them. This happened at night when we turned the lights on at camp, and it was some sort of like June bug type of bugs, and there are huge horse flies, but overall, they weren't awful. Due to the wind, a candle or citronella type repellent probably won't work the best, and a spray that you apply would probably be a better option. If you use a ground tent, take some plastic bags, fill them with sand, and then use those to you tie down your tent fly. It works a bit better than the ground stakes. The Light Station Visitor Center. This is where you'll find restrooms, first aid, guidebooks, I think shower options, and supposedly water. I did not go to this location personally, but my wife did. She said that the water was super difficult to find. It was basically just a spigot sticking out of the ground, and the water was not something she thought would pass as drinkable without boiling or filtration first. Now, all you have to do is drive up and down the beach until it's time to catch your ferry ride back. So that's it really, there's not much to it. I hope this simplified guide helped. If it did, please let me know in the comments. I'd also love to hear any trip reports from your adventures there. We are looking to go back soon, but have a few other places on our bucket list first. Thanks again for watching Raven's Eye Off-Road. And lastly, I want to encourage you to get out there and find your adventure. Here's a link to another adventure you might enjoy. Also, don't forget to subscribe.